Welcome back everyone to Let's Play War on the Sea in the US Campaign episode number 10. Loading back in, the only thing that happened per usual is our transport fleet doesn't have orders. Well, we'll give them some orders to return because we need them to resupply. And the big question, it's raging in the comment section, it's also raging in your own admiral's brain, that's me, is what to do about the where to basically send the supplies next. My current idea is to have the task force, convoy task force, um, and we should probably rename it something other than task force because it's really more of a convoy. I think I'm going to have them pick up a couple new transport ships and they're going to head to one of the inner Solomon Islands. I don't know if it'll be Maliata. This is obviously a, a freebie. We don't have to fight. Troops don't have to land and occupy and all that. But it might be a nice staging point for eventually doing that to Guadalcanal. Like Russell Island would be a good base because it basically gives us um, a nice strike point to every other Solomon Island. That way we would essentially control this whole area if we were able to solidly establish Russell Island. But that's also a lot harder to do since we're closer to the enemy. I mean, of course, it's like a huge strategic win for us, but therefore, I mean, it should be more difficult just because its proximity is closer to the Japanese base. Something like Maliata means that we can kind of go around the outside and then come up, but we're still exposed in this area just east of um, the Florida Island. Islands, I guess. So yeah, there's lots of things to consider. Right now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the Enterprise and her um, task force start moving back to the east. We are preparing to move them back to New Hebrides for resupply. And this is because they are down quite a few. We have eight um, dive bombers and I think, what, five? <laughs> five would be nice. No, we only have three Avengers. So we're really on the tail end. Several people have asked, can you fly in new airplanes? No, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Like, I, I feel like um, these airplanes are like targeted to a specific group. I can't get them to RTB to a different force. Um, although that, that's not like inconceivable, but it's just not the way the game works as far as I know. So anyways, we'll, we're moving at 1x there, but 60x probably going to be a lot more flattering for us. Now, um, with only one transport and two destroyers, it may be a good idea for us to actually do a wildcat strafing run on these transports because they're relatively undefended. I mean, actually, it's mostly about the AA fire. I think we would need a pretty big group of wildcats to get that done, so I'm not going to try it with just two. For now, let's just continue our searching operations to find... We know that somewhere is another fleet missing one of its heavy cruisers, but otherwise still intact. So I want to find out where that group went to. I'm going to patrol just like that. You're going up the slot. You are going this way. That's actually a good, really good scout. So I'll push that even further if I can. I don't know at what point you'll turn around. Um, we have planes going in and out over here as well. Okay, Port Moresby's ready to launch. I don't think I need to preserve the, yeah, the usual. <laughs> Let's have them fly up here just to make sure we're not seeing anything out of this area. And probably the next group that's available. Okay, well, I already said I'm not going to try to preserve the Wildcat, so... Let's get somebody just, you know... Would be good to know that there's nobody approaching from the south. And if they are... Okay, somebody... Okay, here we go. Oh! Oh! Okay, so this is high, 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 high priority. Just to verify, Oilers, or Fleet Oilers, or Fleet Tenders, I don't, I don't know. These are much more expensive, I believe. So our Type 3 is 10, our Simones are 15. So yeah, they're, well, they're 50% more expensive. It's five points, it's not as big as I thought. I, I misremembered, essentially. This is still, I think, a prime target. Now, Oilers, as far as I remember, have the worst penalty to their firefighting ability, as you would expect. So the question is, how do we... We're going to ignore this for now, but I think the Enterprise does have to respond to this. And another, another thing which we don't have to... Which is not going to be modeled here, but, I mean, it is real, is the fact that 
We're getting spotting reports instantaneously. Normally, this is one of the big problems with the Americans. I think in like the first half of the of this of this campaign is they were just getting spotting reports hours after that they were after they were made, just you know, mix up in the, the whole logistics of communication. So uh, that's thankfully we don't have to deal with that, but we can always chalk up any kind of like uh, mistakes or anything. We can pretend, role play it as maybe something like that. Uh, now we do have the three Avengers here. There's still something. I guess what I would like to do is coordinate that strike with the Dauntlesses. Dauntlesses are almost back, so what I think I'm going to do, I know that the Avengers have a pretty good... We actually could even use H Bomb HE to like preserve the very few Avengers we have left. What I would love to know, and I haven't looked at this so I don't know, is... Is their capability the same? I mean, is their range, their endurance the same for all the different types of loadouts? Um, in real life, Torpedo was the, the most limiting, from what I know. But maybe if you put depth charges on, your endurance would be, you know, slightly longer than a torpedo range. Not knowing that, I'm just going to slap some torpedoes on these guys. 360 is going to be plenty for us. I'm going to have them overshoot, and hopefully they can come back and we get a coordinated Dauntless Avenger strike. That's the dream, but we'll see if it happens. Oh, okay. All right, that's a two-two-two, so that is not. Well, we're we're running into some serious issues here. Oh man! So ignore that. I think we're gonna have to have this group come up through here and just go in. So let's have them do something like this as their course. Yeah, we're gonna have to just <laughs> use the Avengers, I mean the um, Enterprise's airplanes down to the very last one. I think a tri the Triton is gonna make a trip into the slot as well. I mean, the things are getting pretty desperate here. So, Renal I feel very comfortable with. 1,750 troops, it's a good number. I also like the supply situation here. We have over double. Um, that means that in the worst case scenario, if we do do some landings over here, there's maybe just a slight reserve, you might say, in on Rennell Island, that we could just take a few supplies from there and reinforce something where they're needed. We could even say the same about troops. All right, well, the Avengers have passed the, the or they're about to pass the dive bombers. Get these guys to RTB properly. Still want to know what else is here, because obviously there is somewhere along here, somewhere, there's another uh, set of cruisers because we did sink one there should be a one with a, a two two one man this this is not looking good though we'll search oh, come on rtb good can i launch you immediately please please okay just point one hours you can really use that whenever you get it at enterprise Okay, God, I just stopped it right at the perfect time. Uh, you only have 29, but I want your 29 to be this way. So we're going to kind of double cover some of the area. Yeah, you'll get pretty much all the way that over there. We might need some more subs. I wonder if I should send some more subs out. I mean, my success with the subs has not been great, but maybe I should even do a more aggressive patrol just to really find out what's going on over here. So, something like this. We're really going to cover this strip. And if they choose to go over the shallows, I think that the timbre over here is going to be responsible for that. So they're going to stick to their co coordinates, co bleh, patrol grids. There is still a little canal. I bet they could still get right out of there. And I don't actually... Okay, so let's be a little bit smarter about this. What reason would they have to go down and come back up? No, let's cancel that entire patrol and send them a little bit more like this. Yeah, this makes more sense to me. That's a little bit better. So, yeah, now they can skim along the outside of this. They can go here, 
which will be, yep, yeah, run into. Okay, now they can still dodge by these patrols. It's not like a guarantee, but at least the patrols are in good positions now. And your patrol, yeah. I mean, ultimately you'll end up doing the same thing, kind of thing, bouncing around over here. It's just gonna take a little while to get there. And I might even want to send the Thresher back because this, the mouth from the Bismarck to Solomon over here is actually pretty pretty well covered by Port Moresby. You should head this way. We just want to make sure there's nobody circling behind us here. Okay, your RTB, you're heading that way, you're heading that way. Motor Bay, you can probably launch. You can, fantastic. So, I just want to keep sending airplanes this way. Like right where even that submarine is. Okay, and good luck to everyone. Yeah, so we just, we can launch now. Aircraft, Dauntlesses are gonna play catch up on their way to the target. And our movement north here really has assisted us. I think it's been a, a very good thing. Okay. Now two destroyers running low on depth charges. Um, these guys are also a prime candidate for resupply. It still looks like New Hebrides is a much better option than sending them all the way over to Port Moresby, although they definitely can resupply there. Actually, it's a, a level four, a tier four naval base. It's quite good. Um, okay, well, let's keep moving on then. Oh, most eyes are gonna be on these two. That's the most important one. Port Moresby's ready to launch aircraft. We'll slow down just to one while we're prepping these for launch. We'll get somebody to do something like this. I don't know why they would have people hugging the eastern coast, but just in case. Back up to 60. Port Morrisby's ready to launch. We're gonna leave the Avengers though. Those are my strike, my, my strike reserve. I don't know actually who's faster. Maybe they're the same speed. I mean on the campaign map. All the Wildcats are coming back. So that's still gonna act as a nice patrol leg. Okay, Avengers might be a little faster than Dauntless. Okay, Enterprise is ready to launch. She does have a lot of Wildcats. Okay, well, we will continue to launch then. Uh, you know what? I know what's going to happen here. We're actually going to get both of them. I'm pretty sure we'll draw both of them into the battle. I still want to keep tabs on the transports here, because I do have my B-17s inbound. So let's try to race ahead. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the Avengers look like they're faster. Enterprise ready to launch. Well, let's continue to launch because I do not want to get caught off, uh, caught by surprise. <laughs> Remember what happened last time. So let's send something over this way. Um, now these guys are going to return. Let me actually see the path. This is RTP there. So those guys are going to cover this chunk pretty nicely. And you're covering that. Which leads... I could try to patrol something over here, but that's honestly, that's better for Milner Island, or for Russell, sorry, uh, Rennell Island to to cover as soon as their Wildcats return. Which means I think I want to continue to look further up the slot. Or maybe even further up here. Especially with the B-17s there. <laughs> yeah, so we'll send basically two up this way, and the next flight will probably be sent up the slot again. But we have some coverage of that with these Avengers. Let's move your course back this way. Lots of aircraft going out. My goodness. Who are we even going to go for here? No, yeah, we have to... I think we can prevent the enemy from resupplying this area. So long as we take out the oilers and the merchants. So this is actually going to be not focused on the warships. For the first time, we are going to focus on those oilers. They cannot upgrade these islands unless they do it with oilers. So we just need to prevent that. I'm, I'm Again, I think that these are updated in real time, zero, zero. So we have intelligence. You can say patrol planes that are invisible to the map or something. Patrolling and viewing. So we see two, two over here, zero, 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 two. So we do have some idea about the different strengths of the various strategic points the Japanese control. So with that knowledge, 
we can see the Guadalcanal and the Florida Islands have not been upgraded yet. And I imagine that that is the purpose of this Euler group. Oh, this is really good timing. This Wildcat's going to get there just in time. Oh, please be close. Yeah, I don't see anything, unfortunately. Okay, we're going for that, so the Dauntlesses need to shift over a little bit. We don't have too much time left, so please make it do it in a hurry. Oh boy. Well, these guys are ready to go. And that means into the world we go. This will be our first joint strike. Okay, good. So let's start the mission and then see where we're at exactly. Alright. Uh, they decided to run these in two columns. Maybe that's their idea with the tankers. What else do we have? I mean, I guess I should take note of the different... Unfortunately, it looks like quite good modern <laughs> armored cruisers. Okay, one of them is a little bit older. This looks like, what, like a Kinugasa? Which, again, was a huge disclaimer that all my guesses are just for fun. Just a joke. We'll see what what they actually are only by identifying them. But, you know, we could probably just take a look in real time. All right, start off with the Tone, which it's not, because that one doesn't have any rear. Looking for a single rear gun. This one is not it. For Ataka, it looks right. Uh, from the top, it looks good. From the side, it looks good. Yep, I think we got our Furutaka here, which is the Kakao? Is that how you say it? Or Keiko? Keiko, maybe. <laughs> Kakao. Uh, so let's identify this, which we can't do. Can we do? Identify it. Good, Furutaka. Yeah, it looks to be a Furutaka. Switch over to this one, target this one, and you are... What are you? You are a Mogami. Okay. Okay, a Mogami. Now, the main thing is to get these Oilers. So let me, I'll actually identify the rest of this stuff just so we can see it on the map. It's kind of fun. And I'll cut back. Okay, all the identifications are done. We have a Momi and a Minikaze. Probably not the same one that we sent heading back all by your lonesome from uh, one of the first cruiser groups we eliminated. Anyway, we're starting pretty close to them. I'm gonna give all orders. So we have basically already a perfect combination to try to do, to try to take out the three Oilers. I'm gonna send a group of four against one of them, a group of four against the other, and then the Avengers are gonna go against the, the last trailing one. It's a little bit weird because I don't know, I'm, okay, I have to mix it up. The Avengers are, <laughs> I don't know who has more anti-aircraft, and this is absurd, not true to real life, but I'm just saying that this game is this game, and we're playing the game, so we have to we have to put the some of the history book stuff behind us and play the game. I almost want the Avengers not to go towards the number seven, which is further toward the back, because my gut feeling so far is, man, the the AA on the transports might be even more than the heavy cruisers, which is really preposterous, right? But that's you know we're still <laughs> I don't know if that's true, so maybe we won't do that. Uh, at least let's have the Avengers go in last, so that they they suffer. The least amount of hits because they are the only one who's you know shy on numbers slightly so number one which looks like it'll be ready first and we're actually taking flak already which is not ideal maybe that means it's time to just give the order to go in and you guys i want you when i unpause at least to drop down as much as possible so are we taking flak already yeah we are hopefully not taking any hits this far away I do want the Dauntlesses to go in. I think that that's going to be absolutely our best bet. So let me start sending the Dauntlesses in. I don't even know. The Avengers might have to do like a full turn or something like that. Let me see if that's the case. If I give them all an order to attack. I'm trying to get the Avengers to do this quickly. I think they'll be able to do it. 
Alright, well, look, at, at this point we're committed, so... I really hope that you guys... I will command you myself if I have to. You guys need to make this run. <laughs> there's no there's no turning back. There's no waiting. Have you guys speed up as well. Try to get in and out of the target as quickly as possible. Okay. They're on their own now. Now our dive bombers are actually pretty far ahead. Of course they're overhead. <laughs> so let's watch them as they're going in. We have some already dropping off to make their bombing attack. Looks like a pretty good angle. In fact, the fact that she's her left, her stern is closer to us, and our leftmost bomber, the rearmost, is also on the left side. Looks like a good combination. Just a fierce flak field. Oh, that looks really, really, really good. Let's let's quickly jump over to number five get their team. I, I'm going to use the nav order. I do think, somebody mentioned this, I think it is the, you're right, the best way of doing it. So let's first do a quick left, right, Q, nav, speed to max, and climb. Now in this game, another comment I, I've gotten, not just once, I think a couple times, is don't climb because you're going to lose, lose speed. In this game it actually is not that way. <laughs> maybe good, maybe bad. I mean, it's good for us when we're in an airplane. And they've dropped already. Okay, we lost one for sure. I mean, not number one, but one of our airplanes has now gone down. Same order here. In fact, if they head due north with that bug, it actually does not matter to me. That's just perfectly acceptable. Speaking of, I think... Is that, is that what's happening? No, got him. And now let's go over to the Avengers, which should have already... Ooh. Okay, the torpedoes look good. This looks true. Man, look at that. And the flames are burning. We might end up getting out of this just fine. Okay, forming up on waypoint. Maximum speed. Maximum altitude. Okay. So let's watch this go in. So far, so good. And if we can get out of here with only three launch... Uh, with only one launch... Okay, one hit. Please don't be a dud. Two good hits. Oh, we got all three. Well, that's a dead, dead spoiler for sure. So far, only one aircraft down. All aircraft are exfilling. This is good. Okay, so now we just wait and see the results. That was fantastic. We only lost one. It looks like we're going to get all three Oilers. I would say that that is as good as things can go. This is definitely a sunk ship. Look at her. She's almost under. Has she not been technically sunk yet? <laughs> uh oh okay there's one number seven. Oh, number seven is the torpedo one well yeah she's even in worse shape but I I mean I'm not an expert but that does not look good especially fires on an oil tanker she's actually man I don't is it because of the sea state these all look pretty bad one of the Avengers might be able to come back. Yeah, look at our Avengers managed to survive pretty well. Let's have you change over here. Continue to climb. You are. Good. Let's bring you back this way. Just so we have somebody to keep tabs on. And that's way too close. But once you get a little bit closer, maybe I'll just do this manually like that. See, I hit Q and you can see the altitude didn't change. So the problem is there's some, uh, there's something funky. I hit Q and the altitude stopped, but the, you know, steering left, right <laughs> did not change, which is not good. Get you to go in box. Okay, now let's continue to look. Number seven sinking, but I have the feeling that these are not going to be able to control themselves. And, oh man, I thought for, sh I, for a second this is one of the ones that was smoking, but no, it's the sinking one already going down. This one, I'm, again, very convinced that she's going to go down. Let the fires rage a little bit longer. I'll just cut back when they are sinking, because I'm pretty convinced that that's the result we're going to see. Okay, we finally begin in the last notification. Number five is going down, as expected. So we can leave. One thing I want to know. 1036. Is this... 
Is this the updated time on the strategic map? Okay, so this is basically perfect. Uh, we have, well, there's 21 points we get. Only lost one aircraft. Really good results. Not, it goes back to 1024. Okay, that's interesting. So what the time that happens in real life does, I mean, the time that happens in the tactical map does not persist for the strategic map. Both of these airplanes need to RTB. Might need to get, I, mean, I might need to wait. I don't know if I can grab, oh, I got it. Now with the numbers we have, we could probably still risk doing some attacks. U, RTB. Man, I really wish we had gotten something for the B-17s. Wasn't to be. Oh my goodness, it's perfect. Oh my gosh, they only have 17 nautical miles left. What do you have here, by the way? They were able to get, I guess they were able to get a Guadalcanal, but not an inch further. So I don't think that they'll be brought into this. I just need to pause the moment because they're still moving forward here. I just need to pause the moment they turn. So I'm going to micromanage this a little bit. I'll do this off camera. I will go minute by minute until they hit zero and start to turn around. Well, second by second, I have advanced. It's probably been about 10, 12 minutes in real life. But we are. If I take the Wildcat and I put World here, my, my idea is we'll suck in everything in a radius around the Wildcat. And you can see the B-17 has just gotten so far. I'm a little worried that it, this is about, that, I mean, this is overdue to take over. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is everything looks really close. I feel like this is a good time to do it. We're going. We got them. The only question left is, did we get Did we get the destroyers and merchants? That's the big question. Let's find out. Oh, I think we did though. I feel really good about this. Let's go find out. Please be here. They should, oh yes, we did it, yes. All right, so a little dedication, a little perseverance pays off. The Wildcats are not meant to actually be involved in this. They're just going to be, you know, observing the resulting action. Now, there's a lot of different ways we can do an attack. Um, we can do level bombing. That's fine. We could also do skip bombing. Now, the problem with skip bombing destroyers is that they have such a low... I mean, they have a low draft. They have a low superstructure. They, I mean, everything about them is kind of small. We're more likely, I think, to hit them from an altitude hit, a uh, bombing drop, than we are from skip bombing. I'm perfectly okay to skip bomb a transport. I think that's the first, I think it was employed, wasn't it first employed against transports? So that I feel like will be a successful, uh, yeah, a successful mission, skip bombing the transport. I would still like to knock out these relatively modern destroyers they're both relatively modern. In fact, I think I'm actually going to go with this is, I can tell what this is already with the three torpedoes. This, the other one looks like it's like the Asashio, one of those Asashio type things. Um, let's just quickly identify. Uh, Yugumo, yeah, these are all the, all these designs look the same. Yugumo, it's Kagero, it's uh, Asashio. So we sank the Asashio. Let's, let's pretend this is the Kagero this time. Why not? But this one is the much more deadly Akatsuki, I think. And I say much more deadly only because it um, has 12 torpedoes and this one has... Um, sorry, I think this one has less. Yeah, it has 8. So we see the 1, 2 on this one versus the 1, 2, 3 on this one. Okay, anyway, so how do I want to do this? Yeah, if I do level bombing, we'll probably want to do... This is even more important, in my opinion, to do the approach from the stern to the to the bow. So yeah, I think... And we're in good position to do that. Okay, so let's just get that set up. Do I want to break my T-34 
teams into maybe a third. I do. So how are we going to do this? I think I'm going to do a 3-3-2 three, three, um, with two. Let's get six to break formation and ten to form up with it. Let's break. Form up. Okay, so you guys will become a, your own independent group. And you're going to be responsible... I mean, you're going to be part of the group that attacks the, um, the destroyers. One of the groups of three will be doing the skip bombing. Okay, so let me go... Let me actually just plan this out. I think we'll basically just want to head along the length of the ship. And I'll see you back in a sec. Okay, let's get this underway. So it looks like... Group um, seven is going to be the lucky ones to go skip bombing. Let's drop their altitude. The other ones I still want to bomb from a... Oof, not too high up, because I'm not super trustworthy of my attempts. <laughs> I might even do these, control these manually. So let me grab six and slow you down a fair bit. That should increase my accuracy as well. I need them to be in line ahead. That is actually true. So three also needs to switch. Okay, they're already in line ahead. Seven is in line ahead. I actually want them... Probably in Vic formation. Yeah, let's put them into Vic formation. Okay, so I, I put a whole bunch of waypoints so that if I'm off in any of them, they should recorrect constantly. And they're coming up pretty quickly, so six, you're slowing down a whole lot, right? And you guys. Okay, I actually. I want you to gain enough altitude that you don't get hit too often. Man, they're actually, we need to level, so let's just level whatever we're at because they need to make sure that they actually hit the target. And I want to be the one controlling this, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go into, I'm going to go in, control these guys, let's see, K I think to lock, shoot, oh, X, X to lock, X, there we go. Um, open bomb base. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. What? That is just un unfathomable. <laughs> I can't believe that. Okay, well, I'm still gonna go ahead and with this bombing run. I don't know how this will work with uh, number three dead, our leader. Obviously, very unfortunate. I'm just, I'm really surprised that these things have the capability to shoot down the B 17. It's kind of un unusual, I think. We have our target, our, our buddy, a little bit to the left, so I actually want to shift left a little bit. Okay, bombs away. Let's get on to our number six. Who. Honestly, are probably looking a little bit better. What happened? No. No. What six? Okay. Oh, bomb date, bomb base, bomb base. Okay, we're switching over to the Akatsuki because I didn't get the bomb base open in time. It's fine. We might overkill one, but we might just miss with all of them anyway. Wait. I'll drop. Okay. So four and five. Let's get them to climb. Do this. And steady up. Six. Same thing. Climb faster. That's good. Very surprised that we lost <laughs> even a single one. Let's see. I usually overshoot on bombs. Let's see how I do this time. Here they come. Oh! Oh, that was like the perfect hit! Okay, well we got some damage. Looks like 7, 8, and 9 are ready to come on in for their run. 
man. Okay, so you guys need to really hit the deck here. Open bomb base. Getting close. And drop. Last one. Skipping, skipping, skipping. Got a hit. And lost another one. Well, skip bombing is. Nobody ever said skip bombing was safe. <laughs> I do care a little bit less about skip bombing being successful or not, so, um, I mean losing B-17s, because these will be replenished. And I don't think that there is any punishment for losing B-17s or any kind of aircraft. I think they just replenish your base over time. What we could do, and I, I wasn't going to do this, but now I think it will be worth it, is to go in and strafe. Um, let's, okay, so let me do this. Let's give you guys new orders. Nav, yes, that's what I thought. Let me do this, the nav here. I want you to come in and actually uh, do a gun run against number three, so we're gonna have to, <laughs> excuse me, get you to lower your altitude quite a fair amount. We'll give you a little bit of time to do that. Otherwise, B-17s, you guys are dismissed. Thank you for your service. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the, anything happened was too severe. Now, definitely it showed us that a near miss can be a hit, because that last one, this one is smoking only because of a near miss. I only, I don't know, is anybody, does anybody have bombs left? Just make sure that they all don't. Yeah. Yeah, looks like they don't have any bombs left. You you son of a gun. What in tarnation? You son of a gun. Why didn't you drop? Yep, <laughs> it's definitely... Did I not hit drop all? Well, number 10, unfortunately, is already damaged, but we're sending them back in. This is the, the cruel fate of war. Oh my gosh, this thing might actually be going down. In which case, we can do a strafing run against the lead destroyer, which has actually separated itself quite a fair amount. Okay, change of plans, Wildcats. Although, you are still... It's still better for us to wait, I think. Then, we'll have you change just to straighten up here. Keep continuing to drop, though. One and two. Yeah, so let's just kind of wait a little bit. Time is on our side. Already a very, a very expensive run in terms of B-17s, though. Yeah, she's actually caught on fire. Oh my. Could it be that she's actually carrying supplies? So if the destroyers carry, just, like, troops, which they can do, they do suffer, I think it's like a 20 or 30% efficiency penalty, and that efficiency penalty is your ability to fight fires. It's essentially your damage, con damage control party efficiency. So I like to see this. I definitely like to see this. If she had already dropped off her supplies, would she be burning this much? Is this an indication that maybe, in fact, she had not um, dropped off her supplies yet? I don't know. For now, we can make multiple gun runs. So for now, I'm going to target the Akatsuki. Going to go all the way over here. Whoop, one sec. Okay, well, there was an interruption in the Tortuga household, and I had to cut away for a little bit. The game is now on pause. What I'm planning to do is actually cut away again right away. I, I changed my mind though. In the time I was thinking while I was away, I was thinking why not just let these fires go as far as they can before we choose to engage? And what in God's name is Six doing? Is she in a steady turn? Look, it says she's not in a steady turn, but 
she clearly is. Huh, yes, this game has issues. It does have some issues reporting proper things correctly. Anyway, let's have Six just go off on vacation. Doesn't matter where. Uh, now, Ten, I'm actually getting to climb because I want Ten to climb and do level bombing from way up. If Kagero and the transports are actually really close together, and they aren't right now, but if they stay close together, I can do like a bombing mission, which may get both of them at the same time. Meanwhile, Akatsuki is still fighting her flames, and I may end up going against her with the Wildcats, do a single pass, um, just to try to provoke any further damage control situations for her. We're kind of turning on, and I know that we're already over 40 minutes, I saw that. Whoa, boy. It's been a fun episode, though. So maybe we do just go in on a... Maybe we'll go in on an attack run here, because there's definitely a large separation between these two. Akatsuki's already in damage, which to me would mean that she's not going to be able to um, do uh, anti-aircraft as well. So she, she should not be as capable as warding off um, of warding off this attack as she would normally. However, that's just maybe not the case. Because in this game, you, you just never know. <laughs> okay, now we do have some flak going, which means... Oh, that's for number six. Okay, number six can do whatever it wants. Number ten is the one I'm interested in. There's no flak this way, which is good. So, we'll have ten do something like this. Just to get her back into position. Let's get over to the Wildcats, who are making their final run on this target. And this is a pretty good angle. Uh, okay, well, while they come in, I just want to see what the arcs are for this. Where are they? Okay, well, we we know where they are now. Maybe I can quickly whip it up. Sashi, what is this? Oh yeah, this is the um, Akatsuki. So what is her anti-aircraft arc? Yeah, she we're we're probably not she's not using her um, front arc, which is good. That was really not too bad. Okay, one of them is smoking. We'll have to get them to ignore their impulses to race away. What? In God's name, why does this not work? Oh my God. There's something goofy with their interface. 100% sure about it. Oh, and number two is on her own. So she's going back. Well... Honestly, she can go back if she wants. Have her target and engage, sure. <laughs> go ahead and do it. You didn't take any damage. This is not really how I wanted this to go. But we'll make do since she's already basically inbound on her run. There it is. Good hits. Now, listen. Listen, just go like this. There we go. Now you're free. And you didn't take any damage, so we can send you back in. Uh, okay, some B-17s are leaving, but the 10 is still not leaving. I don't know if we caused any other further damage, or what we did, but... You know what's funny is, her deck is actually a wash. <laughs> and there's like the, it's the worst case scenario. Deck is a wash. But the fires aren't going out. <laughs> I'm expecting this to be sunk. We will not take further action on her with the with the B-17. I think our B-17 is actually going to end up coming in and making a bomb. Whoa. Whoa. I'm glad I caught that on camera. Oh, and there it is. Okay, perfect. Perfect timing. Ah. Okay, so now we have the B-17 come in and maybe make a run at the Akatsuki. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to send the Wildcats in against the Akatsuki one more time. I'll bring you back for that. And then if we can't kill her with the fires, we'll send the B-17 in. Okay, making our final run now. On the Akatsuki. She's turning, unfortunately. I had, whoa, the screen is flickering. Did that happen on the recording? I'll see only in post. So we have one of them smoking, but hopefully, I slowed us down a lot too. I'm really hoping that we uh, can do some more damage, to, especially to her, her nose. Keep her damage control parties very preoccupied.
any kind of damage in the front would be nice. Okay, so she actually does only focus on one aircraft at a time. No. See, why are you turning... Okay, I, I figured out the bug. If they're turning to the left, you actually have to give them an order to turn further left before they listen to your order to turn right. So watch with this. Turning right, it's not doing anything. No, it is. I'm not sure. Well, with that one, it worked. Who knows? It's just a big mystery. How do these things work? I don't know. Well, the Akatsuki's been on fire for what feels like forever. I'm finally just gonna have to play the game of getting a bombing strike in of some kind. So bomb bays are open. We're gonna go for the Kagero, who's just been making lonely circles over here. I'd like to roleplay it. I don't think it's intentional by the AI, but I'd like to roleplay it that she's picking up survivors from the transport. It's kind of fun to think about it that way. But yeah, I don't... Uh, she's circling, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to actually get a hit on her. But knowing she's circling, we can kind of try to counter for that. Um, yeah, I wish we could tell the bombs to drop a little bit faster. Because <laughs> I, I feel like we're going to get more or less a good hit, but she's going to end up only getting one bomb for our troubles. All this work. Trying to line it up. So I want to launch maybe a little bit earlier this time. I'm going to try to also drop in a tight turn, which might help the dispersion. Oh yeah, I'm going to be going as slow as possible. That's another thing I hope to help with the bomb dispersion. And we're way up at 7100, so hopefully not going to suffer too much in terms of AA. Pretty much the worst conditions that we're going to be dropping against a target that's perpendicular to us. That looked good to me. That looked good. And those bombs have a long way to go, so we'll see. Unfortunately, they have a long way to go, which also means that we'll probably end up missing her. Oh my gosh! Okay, one. Two. Ah, damn. It would have been perfect, actually. But we just, just slightly, slightly let her too much. That was good. I, I think that was a, an adequate attempt. Um, Akatsuki's still burning here. I'll pause and see how much longer she's going to burn for. Wow, this is this is actually kind of exciting. The fire is actually spreading to the middle of the ship. And I think it's getting worse. Oh, she's... <gasps> she's going down! Oh, amazing! Okay, fantastic. So we ended up getting something out of this anyway. Wow. Really fantastic. Okay, well, we can call that a, a successful B-17 strike. Uh, we did lose three B-17s, but we didn't lose any of the Wildcats, which are actually the more important ones in this case, since they're going to return to the Enterprise. Got the two ships. So we can continue to the strategic map, but obviously it is well over time for us to call this video to a close. We'll continue with the campaign next time. We have a, certainly have plenty to deal with on our plate. With this cruiser force, there's also the transport group it's part of, which just disappeared because we got into combat with it. But we know it's still there with three transports. We don't really have to worry about the one destroyer left here. Um, so we'll see how everything goes. I mean, Enterprise is low on airplanes. The situation's fun. This is a fun strategic situation to be contemplating. Until the next one, thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.